Hello everyone and welcome to the 6,000 subscribers special for Shipwreck Sunday. First of all, thank you all so much for 6,000 subscribers. I don't think you guys realize how special that is, but it truly is awesome. So today I have planned for you, we're going to be playing this Lusitania sinking simulator. It does have a daytime explorer mode, but what fun is that? So we're gonna play the main game here. It is a real time sinking, so it does take 18 minutes. Um, we'll be talking about Lusitania, I'll be answering some of your questions and comments, and we will also be giving you a sneak peek at something I'm working on for June. Okay, I'm gonna admit, the last time I played this, like two years ago, I had the hardest time with the game mechanics, but they did recently update this game, so the game mechanics are better, and that pleases me very much. So first I'm going to start with a comment from Abstracts1027. You have been watching our channel for a while on two different usernames, so I appreciate you. This one's a longer one, so if the torpedo goes off, I am sorry. <laughs> Dang, it's been a while since I've shown up here, huh? Anyways, I am really happy I was a witness to your growth, and I can't wait to see what happens next. I sadly have not been watching your videos as of late, just haven't really got mental time to sadly, but hey, good luck. And I guess from here on out, you won't see me for a little bit till I can recover mentally. Uh, first of all, I really hope that that goes well for you. Mental health is something that is absolutely paramount. You have to take care of yourself mentally or you can't take care of yourself physically, in my humble opinion. Keep up the amazing work, a longtime subscriber, sub commander, if you will, haha. Speaking of sub commander, would be cool to give ranks to subscribers for fun, not like how Patreon does, but just little things that can be posted in the community, i.e. Shipwreck Sunday, subclass, sea captain, or something like that. So first of all, I think that is a really fun idea, and I am planning on doing channel memberships at some point, um, just when I have more of an idea of what I want to do for channel memberships, and um, I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep Patreon if I do channel memberships or what yet, but I'll let you guys know um, as soon as I know. And also, we're getting a torpedo from the right-hand side. Should be coming in near the bridge area. So we'll just stand over here, we'll wait for the jets on the water. I do like that they warn you what's gonna happen, so you're not just like, what's happening? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's great. And I'm not sure if they put a second torpedo in or not. That is something that is highly debated among researchers, but as far as I found research-wise, there's only one torpedo, but there was a cover-up pretty much done by the British Admiralty or whoever was running that inquiry to try to cover up the fact that there was only one torpedo. There's the second explosion that happened from just being really close to her engine room, unfortunately, and near those munitions. So, you can see the lifeboats do get launched. If I fall off, I won't drown. I will just be standing on the water. Oh, time to, that is the uh, sign to get out of here. Our second comment comes from Leopard One, also another regular. I appreciate you. What is your favorite naval faction from both world wars? I am always more of a Royal Navy fan myself, lol. Um, well, I would have to agree. I like the Royal Navy because I like their ships, but you gotta admit, in World War II especially, the US comes up with some brilliant ones. Sorry, I have to explore. I just, I have to. But yeah, in World War II especially, that's when I think the US started to shine more with their naval vessels. That's when we really got in on it, and that's where we had beautiful destroyers like Indianapolis. At the Dudester says, There is a company, American Cruise Lines, that has, amongst its fleet, Mississippi riverboats that make the New Orleans to St. Louis transit. If the opportunity presented itself, would you and family consider making the trip? Well, I would definitely consider it. I would say because of this profession I do, some of my family members are not as keen on getting things on things that float as I am. Um, I don't blame them. I research all week about why you shouldn't. But um, yeah, I would definitely consider it. I think it would be an interesting experience, especially because I've never been in that area. I've been on the East Coast before, but never in the South or near anywhere near Mississippi. Wow, we are listing pretty hard already. At Chevy Man said, 
curious if you thought about covering a couple of ships that were recently found in Lake Superior. Um, and then he lists a couple of them. So the first one is the Adela Shores that went down in 1909. That one has a couple of interesting points to it. I won't break them all, but the night it went down, it was following another ship he covered recently, the Daniel Morell. The second one is the SS Arlington. It was down over 80 years ago under mysterious circumstances. And I would definitely consider um, covering those ones because I do like covering things that happened in the news recently. I just like to be able to have all of the details out first. And as long as we have all the details out about those sinkings and those ships, then I would definitely be down for it. At Vega YT Ship Edit says, what is your least favorite 10 ocean liners? And this is a hard one for me. I'm going to be super honest because I don't really have any ships that I don't like. Other than sometimes I feel uncomfortable with warships because I'm not, I don't, I'm not as knowledgeable in them because I did not serve in the military. But I mean, other than, listen to me going down the stairs. Wow, that was violent. But um, other than that, um, I don't really have any ships that I dislike. So this was a hard question. Um, all the ships that I put on this list, by the way, are not ships that I necessarily dislike, but maybe just dislike their circumstances, and that's the reason why they're on this list, because I don't really have any ships I just don't like. Number 10 is SS Normandy, and that's just because she had so much potential, and she was so beautiful, and the U.S. really messed it up for her. I'm just gonna say that us Americans really dropped the ball on that one. Number 10, I would say Wilhelm Gusloff, and again, I don't dislike any of these ships, just their circumstances, and it's just the fact that well over 9,000 people died when she sank, and that deeply saddens me. And I, again, wouldn't blame the ship for it. It just so happens to be the circumstances she was in. Number eight is SS Justicia, and I do love this ship, but I have seen a couple of documentaries and some researchers that equate her to being Titanic's sister ship. And it's not like a Lusitania, Mauritania, and Aquitania thing where most researchers agree that, yes, this is a sister ship to Lusitania. This one is more like... Oh, well, she was adopted by White Star Line from the Cunard Line, and she was built by Harlan Wolf. Therefore, it makes her a sister ship. And I'm like, mm, that's not really how that works. Number seven is SS Rex, and just because she had so much damn potential to continue such a great career, and she was so fast, and you don't hear Italian ocean liners getting as much love as they usually should. I can't operate stairs. Um... And she was just destroyed in World War II, and that is just unfathomably sad. She could have had an even more illustrious career, and wow, the list over this thing. Number six is SS Adriatic from 1872. And again, I love this ship, but she was supposed to be the largest ship in the world when she launched, and it sucks that she wasn't, and that's the only reason why she even made it on my list. Number five is SS America, and it's because she's such a gorgeous ship like SS United States, but she didn't even get to the sad state that SS United States is in. She just got grounded and abandoned, and she has just sat there ever since. Also, I'm sorry I keep heading to the uh, starboard side of the ship here. It's just, it's listing so much, and I want to see when we get close enough to touch water because we look close. This list is what made it so difficult to launch lifeboats because it was so heavily listening to this one side that the port side lifeboats were scraping along the side of the ship, especially with those rivets that stuck out. They'd get caught and either get mangled, broken, or just tip and spill everybody out into the sea. Number four for my least, of, least favorite ocean liners is SS Deutschland, and that's simply because she was used as a Nazi prison ship, and that would be SS Deutschland from 1923, not the one built prior. Number three is SS Capricona, and she was also used as a Nazi prison ship during World War II and was actually in the same harbor as SS Deutschland, and therefore they sank in the same area. She's also often called the Nazi Titanic, and that's because some Titanic scenes for their Nazi propaganda film were filmed aboard her, and to me that just feels really icky, so... Yeah, that's another reason why she made it on my list. But again, not her fault, because she was just built as a gorgeous German cruise ship and just so happened to be put in a bad place at the wrong time. 
Number two is SS Californian. Again, I have no problem with this ship. Just maybe some of the choices that were made by Titanic's wireless operator and by Californian's wireless operator that led to the deaths of many more people during the Titanic disaster than needed to be. And number one is RMMV Oceanic. And that's just simply because I was super excited when I heard about this ship and really disappointed that it didn't come to be. I really hope that answers your question. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have any ships that I, I really just dislike, but I just don't have any that I have a strong dislike for. Also, do you want me to go over here and see if we can get in the water? Let's go see. Let's go see. I'm getting too comfortable walking around this deck already. I wish they had a run, a run mechanic in this. I want to be able to run. You can't really move that much faster. I'm pressing shift. Nothing's happening. But I will say, the game mechanics so far are way better than they were. The camera in this game was just absolutely broken for some of the daytime exploration mode. And from what I've been playing, this has been so much better. So the developers have really done a nice job with this one. They were also the people who made the Wilhelm Gustav game. And that one was also a great one. Oh yeah, we are listed. But you can hear it creaking. They added that in. It's so lovely. And there's so much ambiance. But there is another thing that I'm forgetting to mention. And you're like, um, Eleanor, we were here for a third thing with the subscriber special. We want to know the secrets. So I kind of teased you guys a little bit with a potential for a second show. And I've been wanting to do a second show for a while, but I just couldn't think of an idea that I could do weekly and it would be good and substantial and be entertaining and educational because that's what I like to do and, you know, would honor our love of ships. And I think I have finally found an idea that will hit all those boxes. And I'm not going to give you all the details right now because there will be an announcement later. But what I can tell you is that it will be shorter, but not shorts. It will be probably about half the length of an average Shipwreck Sunday episode, which average is about 15, 20 minutes. So probably about half that length. And it will be more detailed in on certain aspects of shipping, like shipping companies or um, regulations that have changed and other things like that. Details about certain sinkings, like the controversy with Lusitania and going really in depth in that. Or even ship architecture is another idea I have. So it's just doing smaller, more detailed looks at things. And it's also based upon some suggestions I've gotten from you guys. Like, I had a great suggestion to cover the controversy with Titanic's Lifeboat 4, but I didn't think a full Shipwreck Sunday episode was warranted for that. But I do think one of these shorter episodes of this new show that will be coming out in June will be a great addition to that. And we can do, finally, Titanic's Lifeboat 4 and really get into all of those crazy details. I like to stay on the ship as long as possible, but I'm almost wondering if I should just jump off in the water and show you guys what's going on. Because I feel like I'm gonna fall off. I wanna jump over. Oh, oh, I made it. I'll never be able to go back, but I made it. I love all the cowl vents on Lusitania, by the way. I just think it's a lovely addition. Also, um, I'll never let go. I also love the capstans, and just, uh, I love details on older ships like this, and I just wish that ship architecture would go back, go back in time, go back to this, give me the bouginess, the luxury, I don't care if I have to spend a million dollars just to take a cruise, I will absolutely do it, take my money. I hope you guys are excited for the new stuff we're working on, and there are some comments that I didn't read, and just because they said, you know, hey, get well, I hope you feel better soon. I really appreciate it. I have been feeling a lot better from the sicknesses I've gotten in the last few months. Um, I just really needed time over the last, like, two or three weeks to get working on Lusitania Month and make sure that everything was in order and that I had all my ducks in a row, because these are beautiful ships. They are loved by many. And I don't want to get things wrong. So thank you for allowing me that time to do that. Also, this ship feels like it's kind of stalled and sinking. But it's going to kick up here real soon. Because it... Oh yeah, it's, it's impossible to get on this port side almost. I love all the details they have added though. Not all these details were in this game. Um, I do like the Davit Cranes. As usual, I'm always a hoe for good Davit Crane. 
Uh, but they didn't add all these details originally, and they're all here, and they're all gorgeous, and the game mechanics have been like 110% better than they were the first time I played this. Because the first time I played this, I'm like, man, you can't even survive the sinking. It's unplayable, pretty much. Because I'd just fall off, and then I would die. Um, like, I would get stuck in the ocean, and there would be no going back. So I'm glad that they finished, they fixed that. And also, um, I think it's to the point that we're listing so hard that even the starboard side might just be unusable. Look at this list. The important thing to remember here, I may be making jokes and stuff, but the important thing to remember about these sinking simulators when you're ex exploring them is that real people were dealing with this and real people experienced this terrifying list and the fact that only like six lifeboats were successfully launched. Sure, other lifeboats were launched, but not well. And they would get into lifeboats thinking it would save them and they would still be attached to the ship and it would drag them down. And all of this creaking and the detail is really nicely added because it does give you that heaviness that these simulators really need, you know? It shouldn't feel all giggly and fun all the time. It should feel tragic, it should feel sad at times because you are definitely experiencing what people did not want to experience voluntarily. They did not think this was going to happen to them. Okay, now it's really kicking up in the sinking, so I'm going to go ahead and hop off and walk on water and show you guys. You can kind of see her underneath the water, which I have thalassophobia, so this is bothering me. Um, but, wow, the waves aren't even bothering me. I feel so impressive right now. But the sad thing is, then the interesting thing with Lusitania is she sank so fast, and she sank at such an angle that her smokestacks didn't really collapse. So um, the people who were swimming in this area when these smokestacks actually went under were just sucked into a whirlpool by these funnels and they were never seen again. So that is really sad and unfortunate and you can see the ship down there. All the lifeboats are still attached and it's getting so dark that now it's getting hard to see the bow. Her rigging will be the last thing that we'll see. Um, we've already got funnel number two is going under. But I, I've done multiple sinking simulators and I think they're important. They can be abused, definitely, but I think they're important because they do really give you a feel for the sinking that nothing else does. As you can see, she had her quadruple-bladed propellers. Those were exchanged out in 1909, and that actually helped her speed quite a bit. The last thing we're going to see of Lusitania is that mast up there. But she does get all four of her quadruple-bladed propellers out of the water before she does make that final plunge. And it's really that sad to think about because well over 1,000 people went down with her. And those lifeboats that are so far away now are the only things that survivors were clinging to other than a giant mess of chairs and other floating objects that some survivors would cling to. Also, when that wave washed over me, I was kind of terrified. Not gonna lie, I was like, <gasps> Like, I was not okay with that. <laughs> I thought I was just going to be standing on the water and not actually experiencing the sinking, but no, here I am experiencing it in all the ways that make you, sca make you scared and sad. So her rigging and that last bit of the stern section is all that we have left. And it happened on May 7th, 1915. Rest in peace to all the, the victims, and I hope they have found peace in the afterlife. Thank you all so much for giving me this month to celebrate their lives and really celebrate the legend and legacy of these ships because the victims do deserve the recognition. And there she goes. She disappears. Goes out under beneath us. So thank you guys so much. And I hope you enjoyed this 6,000 subscriber special. All of you have a wonderful evening, and we will see you this Sunday with the sinking of Lusitania.